Good morning, guys. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a nice weekend so far, or week so far, I should say. Hope you had a nice weekend as well. Another live trading session this morning. We're going to be looking at eight pairs Aussie CAD, Aussie dollar, pound dollar, euro dollar, pound, uh, Aussie pound yen, dollar yen, and New Zealand dollar. Still got my uh, jogging gear on. But we're going to get stuck straight into the, uh, to the charts this morning. If you're new, Welcome. If you're new to the live room, welcome. This is a fantastic place to really kind of surround yourself with like-minded traders or everyone who's on a journey to become better in their trading, including me. And um, it also, it kind of gives you that belief transference and confidence of what real trading's like. Because when you're out there on your own, it's, uh, well, it's a lonely place at times. So it's great to have somewhere where we can all congregate and discuss and rant and let off steam and you know, and just kind of sense check um, our ideas and all the rest of it. So, um, good to be here. What's everyone been up to at the weekend? Everyone have a good weekend? We're going to go through these eight pairs in just a moment, but let's just talk about uh, you guys for a bit. How, uh, what's everyone been up to? And also let us know if you've got any trades on your radar this morning. We're going to quickly flick through... Um, I, I, the chart that I use for this particular stream, I've left the drawings on from last week so we can quickly scan through, see what happened, what didn't happen, what we predicted, what played out, what didn't play out. And then we'll go, uh, we'll go through those pairs, top right hand pairs that are all flagged um, orange. So Aussie CAD, Aussie dollar, pound dollar, euro dollar, pound, Aussie pound, yen, dollar yen and New Zealand dollar. And we will go through them in that order as well. If you guys uh, have got anything, let me know. If not, then um, yeah, forever hold your peace. No, I'm just kidding. You can talk as we go. You can talk amongst yourselves. You can talk, um, post questions, uh, topics. You can also share ideas if you want to share some of your ideas or screenshots i'll happily bring those into this strip this uh live session and we'll take a look at what you're looking at uh duncan says client work and fitting in back testing the daily chore on the pound dollar made it from 93 to 2003 hopefully uh 2022 by the week's end awesome so um Great stuff, almost 30 years of, uh, of data. Going through foundation two, planning to get that course done by this weekend. Excellent. <clears throat> I look tired, I look haggard. Um, we're gonna get stuck into the charts. I'm gonna kind of, um, I'll use this view because I think people, um, people seem to like this view a little bit better. Um, yeah, let's let's go. Huh? 
Had a nice walk in the mountains with my girlfriend and dog, says Ryan. Nice. Morning, Chris. I went for a nice walk on Saturday. Uh, we lived down, we lived near um, the Ashdown Forest, but there's a place called Forest Row, uh, which is a real nice walk. And um, we did that on Saturday. Found a nice little place for breakfast. And then, um, and then uh, walked back. Yeah, great. Cool. All right then, guys. So look, let's uh, let's get stuck into these uh, charts. If you guys are looking at anything or any radar setups, let us know. I'm going to make a start. We're going to just um, I'll stay on the hourly for now. We are going to be using top-down analysis from the daily charts, um, but I just want to uh, show you guys kind of what happened last week. So some of the things that we were looking at intraday, which is really the time frame that we stop on about the hourly. Uh, I, I use 15 minute time frames for lower time frame uh, entries and trade management. Um, but with trading time frame, the lowest trading time frame that I can use is the hourly. Okay, um, uh, I gave up trading lower, tri lower time frames than that back in uh, April 2020. Just as uh, the craziness happened with lockdown. And it wasn't for any, you know, it was partially because of the erratic movement, you know, things were happening that we couldn't quite predict. And I didn't really want to be spending my time on those lower time frames, managing trades that I, you know, that wasn't kind of, um, I'd basically just come off the back of my biggest trading week ever. And I just didn't want to involve myself down on those lower time frames. And on top of that, when we went, when lockdown happened, my motivation shifted a little bit, and I didn't want to spend more time than I needed managing trades, especially down on those lower time frames. So um, yeah, so I, I haven't traded them since then. Um, will I trade them again? Yep, probably, but I, uh, I not for now. Ryan says, looking at a possible cipher on the Aussie dollar, one hour um, trading view. Oh, he sent a chart as well. Cool, we'll take a look at that in a moment. <clears throat> when we go on to the Aussie dollar, we'll take a look at that. Excellent. So flicking through just to see what happened here, we've got the... Um, We've got the Aussie CAD. We were looking for a bounce off of this level here, right? So this was the previous structure resistance zone on the neckline of that head and shoulders. Remember this? So we got a really great textbook head and shoulders here with the shoulder pattern here, neckline here, head here, neck shoulder, neck, uh, neckline, neck shoulder, break of the neckline. Pushed down, tested that. Uh, neckline this could be where you guys are getting in this was last week's prediction bouncing off of this level didn't actually qu quite get a pullback down to that neckline last week uh, before rallying up some of you might have hit some some targets if you traded the breakout okay the conventional way of trading a head and shoulders is obviously to trade a buy stop order to break out of the neckline and then you're in it immediately you're telling your broker I want to buy uh, whatever your position size is if we hit a price level higher than what we're trading currently and whatever that price level is i want you to get me in on a position at whatever position size you're, you're trading and you know get me out when i tell you to settle back and uh, that is the conventional way to trade inverse head and shoulders or head and shoulders uh, obviously be a sell stop if you're trading short buy stop if you're trading long and that is it right and then you probably would have been in that if you traded the conventional way uh, depending on where your targets were, hopefully you hit some targets on that. But great, it was a textbook setup. Uh, I can't stand this thing that. Uh, <clears throat> I wish you could just cancel off that when when you click off of the drawing mode, staying drawing mode button. I wish it would just cancel off. It has to get one last thing in it. it yeah, gripes me. Anyway. Aussie CAD, that was Aussie CAD. Aussie dollar, we had a, a pattern set up which didn't play out. It was a bit choppy on the Aussie dollar, wasn't really looking at too much. 
A uh, couple of pattern setups on the pound dollar. So it's lots of consolidation last week. And those of you who are ratio pattern fans uh, were going nuts for these. Got a really nice um, Gartley here, which you may or may not have got stopped out of before it hit targets. You would have certainly had to adjust your position. Uh, we've seen continued rollover on the euro dollar following the hold up here where we had the ascending channel trade. This is previous major structure. This is a trade that um, I'm still in longer term on my Ninja Trader account. And uh, if you want to see how I got involved with this, you can go and check out the analysis on my YouTube channel where I did a full breakdown just as I was entering the trade. Uh, but we will go through this again in this session as well. Pound Aussie. Um, pain. Well, it was pain-free until we did get a spike down. I don't know if you guys got stopped out. Actually, your stop loss would be lower than that. So, um, rallied up target ones and target twos. If you took two targets, if you bring on the uh, fib retracement tool and go from... Uh, oh, no, it didn't hit two targets. It's just teasing you around the two target level. Pound yen still compressing into this. We'll take a look at that more in a minute. Dollar yen... What do I always say about the dollar yen? The dollar yen does not respect structure. Uh, always say it. I've, I've lost track of the amount of times I've said it on this uh, on this live session. It doesn't behave like other pairs. It doesn't respect structure at all. Okay, and look what happened here. We had this massive level of resistance. We broke and closed above that. We said if we pull down, this could provide a decent level of support, but no. This market had other plans straight through. This is why I don't trade these, st these styles on this pair. Um, straight through it, back into the middle of no man's land, you know. This is like a breakout and retest of this uh, compression channel here. And yeah, nothing. There's, uh, there's no setup. No setup for me anyway. And then New Zealand dollar, I wasn't I wasn't too interested in. I think there was a pattern trade in here for a couple of you, but yeah, nothing I was looking at. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back out to the Aussie CAD. We're going to go out to the daily time frame, and we're going to remove all these drawing tools. Okay, I love removing all the drawings, starting from fresh. Uh, I've already performed a series, around one round of uh, pre-market analysis this morning uh, already. Um, already uh, already performed a, a round of pre-market analysis on all of these pairs, plus my other swing trading pairs as well. Uh, but we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. And we start on the daily. We use something called multi-time frame analysis. Um, and we use a higher time frame, a trading time frame, and a lower time frame. In my case, I can trade off of the four hour and the hourly, so I've got almost two sets uh, of that because I can use the daily as the higher time frame for the four hour, the four hour trading time frame, then the 60 as the lower time frame for entries and trade management, or I can use the, the four hour for higher time frame, one hour for trading time frame, and then 15 minute time frame for entries and trade management, trailing stops, things like that uh, as well. Okay, which can be confusing for some people that are coming in, um, but don't worry about it. You know, if you're using multi time frame analysis, I just recommend that you use three time frames, and they're normally four uh, multiples of four apart. So the daily, the four hour, the hourly. Okay, so there's four. Um, yeah, so there's four hours in a four hour candle, and then there's four four hour candles in the 16 hour. Uh, day okay so that's that's kind of what I recommend Duncan says I missed the stop by one pip ah damn um that is a pain that is a pain um, has anyone else got any uh, any setups that they that they want to share? Let us know. 
Also, let us know on the uh, on the sound. I just want to make sure there's no um, feedback or echo or anything like that. I think we've nailed it with the sound now. So hopefully, hopefully there's uh, there's no echo. Hold a structure. Thanks for asking. Um, I've been struggling a lot with trading, but I've uh, been diagnosed with ADHD. Maybe someone struggles with the same thing but doesn't know it. Um, yeah, me. I've got that. For sure. Uh, Aussie Yen also has a bear cipher and bats as the demo trader. Pound Aussie looks good for a buy. Uh, that would just tell us what your... If, if, let's, uh, let's get some rules. Let's get some house rules in this live room. Um, this isn't your average live room, okay? This isn't some forum where people rock up and... Uh, you know, Pip Daddy rocks up and says you're wrong or you're right, get long, get short. Um, you might hear some things that you don't want to hear in this live room. Um, this is real real trading, real analysis, um, the reality of trading. That's what this room's about. So if you have a setup, tell us exactly what you're looking at, why you're looking at it. Um, give us a, a, a breakdown, as a detailed breakdown as possible, so that one, we can just go straight to it and know what we're looking at without bouncing back and forward with, uh, with comments uh, and chat. And two, you know, it should be, we've got something called the six second rule, right? If I ask you a question, why you're looking at that or why you're looking at this or what you're gonna do in this situation or that situation, if you can't answer that within six seconds, you don't have a trading plan. And if you don't have a trading plan, you, have, you don't have consistency. And if you don't have consistency, you're not consistently profitable. You're just, you're winning an odd trade, giving it back, winning the odd trade, giving it back. That's all, that's all that's happening with you. So share as much detail as possible on your setup, why you're looking at the level, where you're getting in, how you're getting in, where your entry stops and targets are going and why. Okay, just share with us as much detail as possible on the trade because otherwise it's no value to um, to the room. It's no value to you because, you know, you're just it's like you're just shouting. Uh, so honestly, you'll get much more from it if you can force yourself to perform um, some detailed analysis and verbalize that to the group. That will That in itself will benefit you. Um, I think short term we can have some weakness in gold, says Khan. Um, looking EU longs, says Craig White. Again, Craig, why? Why are you looking EU longs? Pound is stronger and Aussie is weakest in terms of strength at this moment. So when you're looking at pound Aussie, you've got a, uh, a bullish bias. That would... Uh, got... Okay, cool. All right, let us know where you're watching from as well. I can see there's people on um, there's people on YouTube. There's people on um, Share Vision. There's people in Tier One, and uh, there's people on where else, wherever else Twitch. Cool. Okay. Gold at daily chart forming butterfly pattern. Keep having to resync for me. I get that, Chris. It's cr I think it's Chrome. I have a few other windows open, so I might be struggling with the stream. Yeah, check if it's Chrome. Look, if it's if it persists, then let us know because we will want to look at that and make sure that we're uh, we're not, you know, there's something not our end that we can fix. Okay, let's get stuck into some charts then. All right, so let's let's go. This is the Aussie CAD. We're going to start on the Aussie CAD. Bearish trend. Okay, top left, bottom right. Bearish trend. Lower lows, lower highs. Putting in lower low, lower close, and we've just pulled back recently. Uh, where we've been hovering around the 90, uh, 91 level. And um, it is a bearish trend, okay? Moving averages are starting to cross over, so we're, we're running out of steam in the trend. It's not a strong momentum trend. Um, 
which I'd like to jump on top of. One, because of that, but two, because uh, the move that I was looking at already played, so we uh, or already failed. Some of you guys saw the setup where I got involved. I got involved at a beautiful setup right here. And uh, we had an equal measured move, we had a pattern set up, we had a double top, we had a, uh, a, inverse, a head and shoulders on the lower time frame, we had a bear, bearish flag on the lower time frame, we had a high pin bar on the second test, we had divergence on the RSI, we had an even handle number, psychological number, we had strong level of structure resistance, everything, all the stars were aligned and yet still the trade didn't go in our favor. So it was one of those that had an ultra high probability of being right, but it wasn't right. And, uh, and we got stopped out. So that was, the, that was the real high probability entry right there, okay? For a retest of the lows for targets, which gave us a really nice reward to risk profile, but it didn't play out. It didn't play out. And would I take that trade again and again and again, over and over again every time I saw it? Absolutely, because I know that every time I see that setup, I can take that setup with 100% confidence and know that that will be right, you know, high 60%, 70% of the time um, with confidence. So I want to take that trade every time. It would be no good if I took that and it was a loser and then there was another one setting up identical on another pair and I didn't take it and then... I lost out on making my losses back plus more, you know, because this was a two and a half to one reward to risk. So you don't want to get shaken at, and, and the only way that you have that issue where you don't want to take another trade because you're afraid of a loss is if you don't have a tested system that you can trust. And if you don't have a tested system that you can trust, then you've obviously got no financial, uh, no psychological strength to be in the in the next trade because you don't know. You don't know well, if it is if it is going to win, is it going to lose? Um, you don't know the odds. You don't know the probabilities. And all trading is is a game of probabilities. That's it. I don't know what else you've learned out there on the web, but that is it. Trading is a game of probabilities. So you want to know the probabilities, and then you want to be able to use your mental strength to trade that edge and trade the probabilities even through losses. Um, Masaya, Masella? Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Kapari. I'm sure Aussie CAD because I saw a her head and shoulders on the four hour. 91.04 and still holding short. Okay. Well, actually, this head and so this head and shoulders here. So look, let me tell you a bit about a head and shoulders. A head and shoulders conventionally is a reversal pattern. Okay, and what a reversal pattern is is the end of a trend where you're not putting so an inverse. Let's talk about inverse head and shoulders. An inverse head and shoulders would be basically a bearish trend turning to a bullish trend. All right. Now, the, the pattern itself is a reversal pattern. So you're looking for that pattern at the end of a bearish trend. So for me, it would be at major, major extreme lows, that are, you know, previous lows. Or if we're in a long trend like this, at the end of that trend. All right. So for me, this is a great setup for an inverse uh, head and shoulders now. Even though I had a short bias, that short bias was destroyed right here where we said, I think we said, Duncan, I think, said uh, we could put in an he inverse head and shoulders. And that's what we did. We put in an he inverse head and shoulders. Then your bias changes, okay, because we haven't put in a new low. And now we've broken this horizontal neckline and we've pushed back down to the neckline and respected that neckline. We're holding that neckline. So this is actually an entry for... A bullish move. Whoops. Let me just get rid of that and turn this off. Look, I'll turn it off and they have to get one more in. There you go. Uh, but this is the bullish head and shoulders. Now, depending on how you trade these, some of you trade stops below the shoulder. Some of you trade um, stops below the head and then a one-to-one. -one. That's the conventional way of trading head and shoulders. Um, but I know lots of you are, are less, cons are much more conservative in here. So maybe you've got like a one and a half to one or something like that. 
on this. You would be in this now. You'd be trading this at the neckline, buying this up um, for a test of the of of the um, of that recent high. Now, um, <clears throat> Dawood says, "Yes, I agree with you, Jason. It's my first live chat in your channel, so I didn't know a lot about rules. However, kindly find below the screen." Uh, of my reason when I said bullish on pound Aussie. Yeah, there's no screenshot, uh, Dawood. Morning, Stephen. Currently long dollar yen, says Sam Miller. Right click after you've used your drawing tool, then it goes back to the arrow. Does it? Okay, I'll bear that in mind. Thank you, uh, Lee. <clears throat> Euro Swiss, four hour double top, bearish divergent waiting, 26.18. Says Eggles. Egg Probability never make you rich. No. <laughs> Probability, uh, yeah, I think what you're saying is praying and hoping or, you know, if you, if you, if you don't have, if you don't know your probability of your system, you will never get rich. You might, you might strike gold, but the the approach that you're taking means that you'll give it back, in some way or another. It might not even be through trading. Just because of your personality and how you're managing your money means that you'll give it back through other means. It doesn't even have to be trading. <clears throat> Traders and investors are focused on keeping the money and growing the money, not. Just striking, getting a big win, because those types of people aren't going to keep it. It's as simple as that. I've never, I've never met anyone that got a big lucky strike and has still got it all. You know, when you average out what they've earned over the years, it's no more than minimum wage. Would you buy Aussie CAD based on that head and shoulders while your prediction on daily is bearish? Me personally, I'm not trading head and shoulders on this particular pair, okay? Uh, I do trade head and shoulders on pound yen, and I do trade head and shoulders on dolly, uh, pound dollar, but I don't trade head and shoulders on Aussie CAD. Um, I would, if this was on a pair that I would take, this would be an entry point for me, yes. I'd be getting in right now. Um, cool. We've got five people watching on ShareVision. If you're on ShareVision, just use the chat. Please uh, make yourself known. Don't be shy. Um... What's your view on Pound New Zealand? We'll take a look at Pound New Zealand in a bit. All right, so look, this is it. This is a reversal for me. It's not a head and shoulders. Now, going back to what um, you said about the head and shoulders, Marcella, if, if that's how you pronounce your name. Um, how, you, how, you, how you're looking at a head and shoulders in here, right? Now, this you could argue is a downward sloping head and shoulders in here. It's a tiny one. I'd say it's more visible on the on the 60. Okay, so we've got a 60 minute downward sloping head and shoulders. And if you're trading on this time frame, then great. But my argument is it's not as high quality. One, uh, we're not at an area where, you know, we're likely to reverse. We're in the middle of nowhere here. Okay, two, we are... Um, we, we haven't broken this trend yet. So although we're in a, a, a rotation, we haven't reversed the trend for me to even look for a reversal the other way. So for me, this just isn't a high quality setup based on my analysis, my own testing, my, my discretion, my experience. I'm not saying it isn't. You know, you might have tested and found different, but this isn't, this isn't somewhere where I would look for a, a, a head and shoulders to the downside. Okay, so uh, for me, there's absolutely nothing on this pair other than that bullish head and shoulders setup, which I can't take because I don't trade them on this 
this pair. But I will keep an eye on it. And other than that, we're on the hourly time frame now. There's no other setups for me here. Um, those of you who are pattern traders, you may have something in here. Some of you guys might be looking at X. Uh, well, if this is an X to A leg, you might have a, um, a Gartley. But again, it's not, not going to be for me. So let's go to the Aussie dollar then and go and do exactly the same thing, right? Out on the daily. Remove the drawing tools. Bearish trend, however, we held this low, okay? So we held this low, didn't wanna to look to short after that moment. Um, it wasn't an attractive uh, short, it was running out of steam, this trend. No, uh, no opportunities to carry on with a trend continuation or trend following traders, you know, really not interested at this point because we've hit this 0.7 level like a, a brick, like a floor, okay? So after that, we start changing our um, approach to our other systems that we can trade in this hold. So we're now ranging, we're now moving sideways. Again, some of you might have seen this as an inverse head and shoulders right here, where you had the um, head, shoulder, neck, shoulder, break. Okay, some of you might have been looking at that. Ah, look at that, it does go. Beautiful. Thanks, Lee Wilkinson, for that top tip. I said I did, I looked at the daily chart, noticed that I had marked the inverse head and shoulders. I just want to see it bounce on my line, then I will close. Um, cool, well, just bear in mind the market doesn't do what you want it to do. <laughs> You, you, should have, you should have a system that you're trading and an order at a place where you know it hits or it gets taken out more often than not. And you should have tested that to know the probability of that outcome. If you don't, look, if you don't know the probability of the outcome of everything you're trading, you don't have a trading system. And you are just guessing. I know like this sounds like common sense. When I say it loud, it sounds like real common sense, but believe it or not, this is the biggest problem. This is the biggest thing that traders don't do. They don't have a system where they know the probability or eventuality of every setup. And why? Because it takes a hell of a lot of work. Hell of a lot of work. Our tier one traders know how much work that takes, right guys? Game changer, it really, it really is. Um, I'm pretty much done with the courses now, getting stuck into testing FTB, says Sam, excellent. I'm done with uh, courses now, getting stuck into FTB. Oh, Stephen said that, sorry. Um, great. Potential bullish cipher. Okay, let's take a look. So the four hour time frame are moving sideways. So what I was saying is, this is where we wanna reach into our trading toolbox and pull out a strategy that we can trade in this situation that we know the probable outcome of. And for some of you, it might be, you know, it might just be trading off of a, a channel. For some of you, it might be uh, ratio patterns. So for those of you who love cipher patterns, we just had Phil type in, uh, X, A, B, C, D. Down at the 786 is a completion point. If I can get it, there you go. Completion point for a cipher pattern. 7029 is the completion point. The cipher pattern was a pattern discovered by uh, our very own Darren Oglesby at Tier 1 Trading. Um, you're going to have a, it's a very, very profitable pattern because it's got a high strike rate high probability on most pairs that I've tested it on, not all. Uh, but you're entering at the D completion, which is 70.29. Your best case scenario target would be at the 382. Um, and then your stop loss, whatever your stop loss rules below X. Now, because of the shape of the cipher pattern and the characteristics of the cipher pattern, it's one of those patterns where um, it's usually a 0.9 to 1 reward to risk profile, so an inverse reward to risk profile, or a 1 to 1 at best, okay, unless you're getting in a little bit late. But it's one of the few pairs that we trade regardless of the reward to risk profile because of the strike rate. So the strike rate makes up for the 
um, the strike rate makes up for the for the um, reward to risk. Get your words out. Get your words out. A lot of effort, but worth it, says Chris. Yeah, it's it's the only way. Like it's the only way. I gave an analogy the other day, or or an example in in just a normal business where people have this idea of making money in a business. It could be trading. It could be a sandwich shop. And the thing is, people people don't do a tested system, so they don't know the probable outcome of how much they're going to make, or you know what their system should perform like in trading. But people don't do that in any business. And what they do is they, they start and try and make money. And then they realize, my time's worth more than this. <laughs> they don't do it the other way around. So they don't sit there and do the numbers. They don't go, right, okay, this, we should make this much profit. This, money, this many people go past the shop each day. Out of that, 10 people come into the shop. If... T if you know, if the average spend is five pound per day, then we get this much money, five, 50 pound per day, blah, 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 you know. And then they go, right, what does that equate to in profit? And then what does that equate to after tax? And then what does that equate to that we can actually take out of the business's profit and pay ourselves? And how many members of staff are here? So we have to divide that by two. Okay, right, it's actually, I'm going to work for like five pounds an hour or whatever, right? Now, they do it, and then they go, ah, oh, do you know what? I don't want to sit here every day for five pounds an hour. It's too stressful. <laughs> if they'd worked that out in the first place and they knew the outcome, they would know what they're working with, right? And then they could choose. If tr with trading, if you don't know the ins and outs of how your system should perform, what your profit should be over a long period of time, what your maximum drawdown is, what your longest drawdown is likely to last for, you know, your maximum winning streak, all this kind of stuff, um, you are not going to be able to sit there and trade it. Uh, honestly, you're not. And I'm yet to meet someone who's doing it successfully for, for over two years. Can you please give me a lesson on some of the methods and tactics people use for active trade management? Uh, active trade management. Um, what, like you mean whilst you're in a trade, managing the trade? Love your content, Jason. Haven't seen a selfless trader like you. Uh, thank you. The reason being um, is because the reason I even started doing this stuff <laughs> uh, was not to sell courses or anything like that. It was because I was, one, I was bored, and two, I... Um, I just wanted one message. I wanted to get one message out there and that was to give people realistic insights because there was so much BS and crap. So my only motivation was to just show people what it was really like. Um, I didn't proclaim to be the best trader in the world. I didn't proclaim to uh, be a wizard. I didn't all just show my winning trades. You know, I didn't, I wasn't, it was just come in, watch, watch how I trade. That's it. <laughs> you guys got any better ideas? Let me know, but this is how I trade. And so far, I haven't met anyone who's been able to um, show me a profitable way of trading without going by the principles that I believe in and I now teach. Um, I mean, what are some of the rules-based ways that people trail stops? Okay, let's talk about trailing stops. Okay. So, a great way of trailing stops. Let's just say that the four-hour time frame... Let me just remove these uh, drawing tools, okay? So, let's just say that we had seen a break and close below this low. Let's just say we're in a bearish trend, all right? And let's just say that this hasn't this hasn't played out, okay? Looking left. Right. So we've had this break and close below. 
and we're looking for a pullback and we want to get short okay and this is our trading time frame where we go okay on the four hour time frame if we pull back i'm going to look for a short here um, and then i'm going to get involved all right and you wait for a pin bar or you wait for whatever your signal is like we're just pretending at the moment okay let's just say this was your entry or you know this was your entry or you waited for the lower low lower closed candle which would have been this one here so there's three entries here and you get involved okay and your stop loss obviously on the four hour needs to be you know above uh, at your optimum position to make sure you don't get stopped out you're given the market enough breathing room and depending on your risk reward profile you want to get a one-to-one -one, ideally um, as a minimum um, and you're in okay now on a lower trade on a lower trade management where you're trailing stops what you'd be waiting for is a break and close below this low okay and then you'd be looking to lock in some of your profit or so you take profit at this low say okay and then to trail stops for your open position the rest of your position you might drop down to a lower time frame so let's just go down to the 60 and we'll say okay where did we get in got in here all right we got in here now every time we put in a new low we trail the stops below the previous outside return so let me just show you how that works Let's just say that we put in this low here. Um, our stop loss is still up here, okay? So we, we hit this low, our stop loss is up here. Now what we can do is trail our stops to break even, say. So let's just say we trail our stops to our first position size. So we're just letting the trade run now. Now, every time we put in a new low, we want to be able to trail the stops below the previous outside return. So let's just say that we put in this low. Let me bring on the drawing tool. At this point, we can't trail stops, okay? We can only trail stops once we broke and closed below this low here. So at this candle here, boom, that is when we can trail this below above this high, okay? Now, as we put in this new low, this carries on. We can't, but we can't put in, um, we can't move the stop again until we break this low, okay? So we pull back. We still can't move our stop. We still can't move our stop. We still can't move our stop until boom, we break and close below this low. Then we can trail to whatever the ATR is above this or whatever your stop loss method, and then so on and so on and so on. So in this instance here, right look we don't actually break and close below this low following this pullback which means that we would be stopped out here make sense even though our stop loss was trailed to here we can't get any lower because we haven't put in a new low beyond this pullback so we never ever put in a new low therefore we could never ever trail this below uh, or above this pullback Make sense? That's one way. Another way would be to trail an ATR above every candle. So like systems like the FTB, for instance, you're using, um, you're using a, uh, a, a, a trail above the, the candle, each candle high. So every candle high, you, the candle closes, you put an ATR above the, the high of that candle. That's one way. Now, there's many, many other ways of using a lower time frame to trail stops. You know, you might be, um, as I say, well, that's two ways. You might be trailing above outside returns. You might be trailing um, above candle highs. Um, you might be trailing with price action in some other way. Like you might be trailing your stops. You might be trailing your, like for instance, the daily chore or the FTB, as I say, you're just, you're not placing a target order at all. Your stop loss becomes your target, your, your profit order. Why might you use the lower time frames to do that? Okay, well, look, well, the reason I use this example here is because on the four hour, this might just be considered as one big move, whereas on the hourly, you're getting those new structure lows and pullbacks. If I went down to the 15 minute time frame, you could either you could tighten this up okay so on the 15 minute time frame you might have a situation where you had a new structure low make sense and you would have been able to lock in those profits does that make sense 
This low here, it didn't in this case, but this might have closed below, which means you could have trailed down to here, and then it rallied up and you would have locked in more profit. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. But that's a great way of, of locking in profit. Um, what I would say about trailing stops is you, you, you ideally want to take off some profit first. So as I say, we're taking off profit at that first test of the low and then we're locking stops to break even. So that means we can't lose any money on the trade. And then we just um, let the thing run and then we just, you know, just keep letting it run, letting it run, letting it run. You almost... Uh, you don't you don't have to place a second target order you can just use your stop loss to take the profits when you get stopped out what i would say is though if you've got any major lows looking left you place a target level just above that okay and then you either get stopped out or you hit that target whatever comes first because you don't want to then you know you don't want to keep trailing and trailing and trailing and then get to a major level of support where you think well i'm gonna to have to be in this trade managing it for longer than possible than necessary uh, because you're going to miss out on other opportunities potentially so you want to be out of the trade remember as traders it isn't our job to just pick and hold for a long period of time if you want to do that you might as well invest you know a trader wants more opportunities we want to get in and out yes we want the big reward to risk profile trades but we still want it to be as quickly as possible I want to do it as quickly as possible. Anyway, um, <clears throat> let's go back out to the four hour. And where are we? Where are we? Here we are. So, what? We pretty much wrapped up this uh, this pair, didn't we? Moving sideways. Some of you pointed out a, uh, a bearish cipher pattern. But other than that, guys, not not a lot at the moment. So let's go to the pound, clear off the drawing tools, go out to the daily. Horrible pair, this one at the moment. This is consolidation. Okay, this, uh, this right here is consolidation. If we went out to the weekly chart, this would just look like a doji candle. So if I go to the weekly, um, there, look. Two dojis. Uh, that's just indecision. So when we've got indecision like that, it's great for consolidation patterns potentially, but it, this is horrible. This is just no movement at all. There's no decision. We've got bullish rejection here, bearish rejection here, bullish rejection here. We're just moving sideways. One doji candle after the other, one pin bar after the other, and it's just... We're just waiting, you know, waiting for the market to do something, waiting for the market to show us its hand. Um, so we go into consolidation mode. For those of you who are pattern traders, I don't know if you trade on the daily, but there's, you know, kind of a textbook uh, Gartley set up here if you trade Gartley patterns. Or you might just be using that Gartley as an entry for, uh, you know, something else or a, a filter or an indicator for something else. But for me, this is consolidation, okay? I don't want to look for trend trades. I don't want to look for counter trades. We're just moving sideways. So what I want to do is zoom in on that consolidation zone. Whoops. On this consolidation zone. And I want to just go, right, what can I take advantage of in my toolbox where I know there's a high probability of being right in this situation? Okay, do I have anything in my toolbox here? Well, looking at this, it's a load of crap. <laughs> 60 minute time frame, load of crap. This is probably the worst market movement for my trading in the whole portfolio here this eight pair portfolio the only thing i could potentially trade here is an ftb which if we happen to pull all the way back down here to 35 33s and close there'll be an ftb there but other than that uh nothing if you guys have got anything on this let me know pound dollar is dead nothing for me and my style of trading so we can happily move on now, what we're going to do is we're going to get through the euro dollar and we're going to then take a quick 13 minute break. Let me know if you guys are getting value from this style of live trading room. I know the tier one guys. Um, I know the tier one guys uh, thoughts, but 
Let me know if you're watching on another platform. Um, let me know if you're getting value from this stream. Because if not, obviously I won't won't do them. <laughs> we do we do this every day inside the tier one platform. Every example helps. Yeah. A lot of the stuff, like just the talking and the thought process and the ranting and kind of venting, that is most of the value in these live trading rooms because it's just what what's on everyone's mind, what everyone's concerns are, and sometimes it's just refreshing uh, to hear it from someone else or to see you know someone else's take on it. All right. So any questions before we uh, round off on this pair? This pair is a pair that I, I took a short on, still in this, um, and we're doing all right. We're in a nice little profit here. I'll show you exactly what I was looking at. So again, daily time frame. Let me just remove all these drawings. Daily time frame, bearish trend. All right, now if we wanna just draw this out, start here, lower low, lower low, lower low, okay. Yes, it's a perfect inverse head and shoulders head pattern, but we push right back up to the neckline, which is where I got in. So I got a real tight reward to risk on this, a real tight stop loss, great reward to risk. What I was looking at is how can I enter at this, uh, at this level here, all right? Now, we had, oh, come on. A bit like the uh, the Aussie dollar, we had some stars align in this level. I looked down to my first trading time frame at how I could potentially get involved. Um, and we had a nice retest up here. We had a nice um, doji. We had an ascending channel as well. For those of you guys looking at the ascending channel, we had the ascending channel right here. Targets would have been taken off um, already on that around 14.23. And since then... Again, target one's here, target two's at the lows, or maybe you got involved, use this as an entry, and then you got your targets down at the lows still. Um, but we're rolling over nicely now. We've held this level since, and it's continuing uh, down. If I just drop out to the four hour again, you can see we had this really nice retest here, had strong divergence on the RSI, went overbought up to 18, uh, 90, divergence down to 65s, Equal test of the highs, really nice indication that you could uh, see a continuation down. Some of you might be waiting for a 2618 setup, where you're waiting for a pullback up into this level and then look into short. That would be ultra conservative. Or um, the only other thing, if you're not in this, could be a pattern setup. So a back pattern would be uh, down here at the lows. You'd have to wait a little while for that yet. And then you'd be looking to take it long. So... We're short on this, great setup. No more to say about it other than wait and hold. My target's down at 11.57, um, so we'll just have to wait and see how this goes. In the meantime, any other setups on this pair, you could get an FTB for the short. FTB signal, depending on how this closes. Um, or if you're trading the lower time frames, you still might be looking for a short, a trend trade, range bar time frame, uh, range bar charts be good for this as well so um, yeah if you're looking for a short on this here's your zone you're entering that short zone right now so depending on your entries could be a lower low lower close could be a, um, a retest on the sorry 150 minute chart what the hell's going on I wonder why that looked a bit odd yeah, no, there's probably not a uh, there's probably not a setup here. 150 minute chart. Who trades the 150 minute chart? Um, it's very refreshing for the brain to be around like-minded people. Absolutely. Great value. Sure, always valuable indeed. 2618 says Phil. Good morning, says Ed. All right. So look, what we're gonna do now is we've been through four pairs. I'm gonna go and refill the old coffee cup and um, I'm gonna leave you on 
13 minute break. We're going to come back at half past eight UK time. Okay, so you can see the time up here when we get, sorry, not half past eight, uh, 8.40, okay, 8.40 um, UK time. So I'm going to put a little hold screen on here. If you've got any questions or setups that you want to look at after the break, post them into the chat, depending on what platform you're looking on, just post them in there and we'll take a look at those. And I'll see you at 8.40. Um, yeah, let's go. i 
All right, guys, welcome back. Second session of today's live room. Hopefully you're doing well. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the first session. Uh, it's really kind of a realistic view of what trading's like. Sometimes it's set up, sometimes it's not. Sometimes, um, sometimes there's a lot going on, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you go through big drawdowns, sometimes there's nothing to look at whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, is what it is. Um, this hopefully gives you that kind of refreshing motivation that you need to carry on. Uh, that's really what we set out to do in this session. <clears throat> Duncan says, I mostly swing trade, so most of my back testing is on the daily four hour. Patterns and FTB, the only setups I trade on the one hour, but I'm fairly conservative as I don't have time to monitor setups on the one hour charts. So I only take high probability patterns right now. I still run my own business, so client work has to come first. I'll look at lower time frames only once I've retired from my job. Perfect, great. The last thing you wanna do is have to focus on the noise that is displayed in low time frames if you can't maintain consistency. And the chances are, if you're going down onto lower time frames, you're, it's going to be harder to be consistent. So, the, everything in your trading should be based around consistency. You want to be able to do the same thing at the same time every single day in the same situation, and that's it. If you can do that, you've you're pretty much there. And then you just got to get a system that's you know earns money over time, that wins over time, it's got a positive expectancy, basically. All right, <clears throat> so we went through four pairs before the break. Have we got any questions come in? Um, does anyone know how accurate the XABCD pattern tool is on TradingView? Seems like much more efficient way to test patterns. Yeah, I always like to double check, particularly with Gartley patterns and things, because it's gonna depend on how you, um, how you trade them. Also, the cipher pattern tool sometimes gets it wrong on the projection of the decompletion. Um, they did get that tool very wrong at the beginning. We actually wrote to them and said, you know, could you change it? And they did, because uh, obviously the cipher pattern was discovered by Darren, who's, who's you know, tier one trading, my, co my partner, co-founder. And it's a very popular pattern. They got the tool wrong, um, but still we're not quite happy with it. So I like to use it for convenience, but I always double check the ratios if I'm gonna, if you're gonna take a trade, if you're trading on TradingView, you know, you wanna make sure that you double check the ratios to make sure that they meet your entry criteria. Otherwise, you know, you'll always have that in the back of your mind. Um, what else, what else? Any other questions come up in the break? Everyone's saying they're enjoying the uh, the live stream. Ed Porter says, which pairs has he looked at other than the EU? We looked at Aussie CAD, Aussie dollar, pound dollar, euro dollar. For anyone who's kind of um, wondering what order we go through these pairs in, uh, if you look over on the right hand side, you're gonna see a list. And on the top right, you'll see eight pairs that have got an orange flag. 
Now we're going through them from top to bottom in that order. So Aussie CAD, Aussie dollar, pound dollar, euro dollar, and then now we're gonna to go to the pound, Aussie pound, yen, dollar, yen, and finish up on the New Zealand dollar. So that's the order. Let's, uh, let's get back into it. We're gonna to go to pound Aussie next. Whoops. Pound Aussie next, gonna go out to the daily time frame and do the, exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Anyone looking at anything on the uh, Aussie Pound Aussie that they want to share with us? Anyone looking at anything on this? Rain Lim says nice music. <laughs> yeah, I've managed to... Um, After a lot of, uh, well, let's just say a lot of grief last night, I was um, linking my desks in term, terms of audio visual. So my music desk, my music production, sound production desk over there is now linked to this desk. So I can run streams or music from there over onto here and I thought it'd be nice to have something in the break. Uh, which is cool. Um, anyone got anything on Pound Aussie? Rene says Pound Aussie 2618 on the four hour. Great. Let's take a look. So, Pound Aussie on the four hour. Let's take a look at the daily first. We know on the daily that if I just draw in this horizontal line, uh, we failed to break in close above this previous high. All right. So first indication is, well, actually, I don't want to buy this up anymore, okay? I don't want to buy this up. Why don't I want to buy it up? Because we're at a decision point, and, the, and the, the way that markets behaved here has basically said to us, um, you know, we're not likely to put in a new high just yet. We've, we've, been re we've seen rejection at that level. So why would I want to buy this up? I don't, I don't want to buy this up because it's, you, you're basically buying against a, a ceiling. So just like, the inverse, just like the head and shoulders we were talking about, there is a reversal going on here or a hold at this level um, in the means of a retest. And we've also violated this retracement here, which then sets us up for a 2618. So it's going to be more visible on the four hour. If I drop down to the four hour, you're gonna see that we've had the retest, okay? Um, we had some divergence on the RSI, so we had overbought conditions plus some divergence, not the best. This isn't the best retest anyway. Um, but we've then had a violation of this retracement, and then we've pulled back up. And what you're looking for for a 2618 is from the second test to the low, a pull into the 618, and then you're shorting at the 618. And normally you get a one-to-one -one reward to risk to targets because it's a, a more conservative way of entering. You're entering at the 618, your stops are above the highs and your targets are at the lows. And it's normally a one-to-one, -one, uh, yeah, look, bang, bang on a one-to-one -one here uh, for that setup. So it's not, a, not as nice a risk-reward profile as a, a double top, um, but it's a more conservative, it's a higher probability setup in most of the pairs, and then it's um, a one-to-one -one reward to risk. So there's the 2618 setup. Um, other than that, we are still moving sideways. There's no reversal, there's no trend. I, I don't wanna look at anything that's kind of longer term here. There's no, it, it will just be sideways patterns, consolidation setups. Um, so with that said, you know, it's really just about um, identifying in my toolbox what I could trade. So that could be pattern setups, it could be, um, has anyone got any pattern setups on this? I know there's a lot of pattern traders in this, uh, in this room. Let me know what you're looking at. Um, and we'll take a look at what you're looking at. I can already see a pattern set up right here. Triple top is more conservative. Um, triple top for me starts turning into a bullish breakout flag. So unless you're talking about a kiss of death, 
There's a big difference between a triple top. Like, let me explain this. This is another little lesson. This is the this is the thing with discretion, okay, and um, identifying high probability setups. Okay, so look here. Take note of these three setups that I'm going to go over. All right. Now, let's just say that this horizontal green line is where we're looking for a a hold okay so a counter move or a, a short now if we were to put in a double top okay so let's just say we put in a double top is this a higher probability short or a higher probability long let me know let me know what you guys think I'm going to sip some caffeine. High probability long or high probability short? Long. No, look, this if if this is if this green line represents major resistance, okay? And we've put in a double top, a valid double top. This is a high probability short. There's a high probability that we're likely to roll over here and see a reaction here. All right. Now, if we then do a triple top. Now, look, let me just draw this on before you start screaming. Let's just say we do a triple top. Is this now a high probability short or a long? Let me know. We haven't violated this low. Is this now a high probability short or long? This is actually a bullish flag breakout setup. This is actually a bullish... Remember, there's no wrong answers here, guys. You can put whatever you want. But this is a bullish flag pattern. Now, the subtle differences that make... That gives you a higher probability short would be how this retracement is violated. So let's just say, for instance, instead of um, holding this low, it violates this low. Now, there's a high probability of a short here. Ultra high probability. Okay. This is what we call a kiss of death. And normally in this situation, what you see is a, la a big spike on this final test. Uh, some people call it stop hunting. Uh, that is going on, obviously. It's basically where you see a lot of stops taken out and then the price just plummets. Okay, so there's three different setups there with subtle differences, but are gonna put you on a high probability long or a high probability short, and it's all about adapting and, and reading price and knowing what side is the high probability side. Very important lesson uh, for any trader looking to trade structure, because if you're respecting this low and you're putting in a flag pattern, there's a high probability that will break out to the upside. If you're putting in a double top, there's a high probability we're gonna see another rollover there. If we're, yeah, uh, by the way, this is all if we're at structure, okay? So, and then there's other filters, like depending on how far we pull back on the double top, you know, that's going to give you high probability continuation if it's a trend, if we're like moving harmonically, if we pull back to a 382, we're likely to push up rather than hold the double top. So there's all these different things that you can add to your discretion to know what is a high quality trade and what's a low quality trade. And that can't be learned. It's something that you can... You can accelerate in your learning by being in environments like this and picking it up from real conversation and real traders, but it's something you have to really learn uh, or earn in the markets, just picking it up, picking it up as you put in more and more reps. All right. Cool. So for me on this pair, um, I'm not looking at I'm not looking at anything. There are a couple of pattern setups. Let's just. Um, Let's take a look at those. So those of you who are pattern traders, uh, this has actually been blown out now. So yeah, not not too much here uh, for me. 
we're just moving sideways. So not a lot on this one for me either. Uh, still long, says Murphy. No conviction. Now, the pound yen is a pair we've been looking at for a while in this compression channel. Now, we can't really compress anymore. There's likely to be a strong breakout on this pair any day now, okay? Because we, we just can't... Um, with the, how we've been respecting this channel is like this. We've been moving. This is a daily chart. This is the last, what, month? Almost a month. We've been respecting this support of this channel. Um, you know, yes, we could we could kind of we we might see the the channel compress even further, but we're likely to see a big breakout of this pair very soon. We can't just move sideways like this uh, this you know this tightly for much longer. So we're likely to see a move out of this channel, and um, depending on what way we go, could open up some opportunities for us. Depending on what type of trader you are, so uh, yeah, we're at the moment really not looking at. There's no trend here. We're consolidating, but we're crushed so tightly that there's not really going to be any setups in here for pattern traders or maybe on the on the one hour. But there's really not a lot here. I've got no notes on this pair whatsoever. If anyone's got any setups on this, let me know. I know Tony's one of our traders that predominantly trades the pound yen. That's one of, I think it's the only pair he trades. Um, and he does very well just trading the pound yen. But, yeah, there's pattern setups. There's really not a lot here that I'd be interested, I'd be interested in. Um, usually, with these bigger ATR pairs, the, the pairs with bigger average true range, like the pound Aussie, pound yen, I get only shallow windows for entry anyway, because I need tight stops. Because the, you know, just looking at this, if I was to enter here and put a stop here, right, this is the four hour time frame, that's a 217 pip move. So <laughs> I, I, I only get shallow windows for entry because I need tighter stops than that. So high probability setups only, real nice reward to risk profiles, tight stops, which means I don't get as many opportunities on this pair. But when I do, I'm right much more than I'm wrong and they're very, very profitable setups. Um, and there's nothing here at the moment for me. So we'll roll on to the dollar yen. Currently SP500 short and uh, gold long from the other day. Excellent. Good stuff. Hope it goes well for you, Brendan. Russian news seemed to move my profit trades uh, back towards entry. Yeah. Yeah. What we normally see with that type of news is it's already priced into the market. So normally when the announcement comes out, it goes back to where it was. Like it's uh, <laughs> it's priced in before the move, before the, the actual announcement. Euro pound would be nice. All trades in profit, but stops about to be hit. Oh, so, okay. So you've rolled stops to uh, to profit. On pound Aussie, there is a bear bat on the 60 minute. Let's take a look. This one. If you're going to fire in some trades, guys, just let us know four pieces of information. The pair, the time frame, the, the, um, the, the strategy or the pattern, and the X point or the impulse point. So uh, right here, I think you're looking at this. Um, a bear bat, yeah, so this wouldn't be a bat pat. Oh, hang on, I see what you're looking at. I see what you're looking at. It's an hourly for a start. It'd help if I listened. So you're looking at X, A, B, C, D. Cool. Bat pattern. Rolling over in the other direction at the moment, so it's not not something to get too excited about just yet, but yes, there is a, a bat pattern there. Um, <laughs> cool. Alright, dollar yen. 
Dolly Yen does not behave like other pairs. As I said at the beginning of this stream, this is something I was looking at, and I said, this major level of resistance should become support in other markets, but this pair doesn't behave like other markets. Had other, other plans. We had the uh, Russian news. We just plummeted straight through that. Dolly Yen doesn't give a, a crap about what other pairs um, behave like. It's got other plans. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't conform. However, if you did catch the daily pattern uh, X A B C D, this Gartley absolutely smashed it. Deep Gartley pattern that we uh, drew on last week rolled over. Ultra tight stops compared to reward to risk profile of I think it was a two and a half to one. Uh, so a nice setup. And if you caught it. You profited around 100 pips, say. So that's the target one as well. So nice nice job if you caught that. Take care, Sam. Um, Hemish says, Euro CAD, one hour bullish flag. All right, let's quickly jump over to the Euro CAD then and take a look at that. 60. Euro CAD, one hour bullish flag yeah not not seeing a uh, I'm not seeing a bullish flag on this but if you are it doesn't mean you're wrong it's uh, impulse from 41 uh, impulse from 41 20 Okay, so you're looking at this. Impulse, flagpole, and then you're looking at this. Might be clear on the four hour. So this is what you're looking at, uh, Hemish. <clears throat> Correct? Cool. The S and P. Um, we saw a a higher low here. Um, last week, the pound, the the Bitcoin. Everyone's asking about Bitcoin at the moment. is showing some correlation with the S&P, believe it or not. But I've been tracking this with the S&P for about three months, and there have been some slight correlations there, which is really interesting. It's something I'm uh, tracking and monitoring. All right, so um, dollar yen. We're back into consolidation zone. Let's go out to the four hour. Let's remove drawing tools. Let's thicken this up so you can see it a bit. Clear consolidation, right? Really clear consolidation. How can we get involved? We're in the middle of nowhere at the moment. Pattern says ups. You're either gonna trade off the high and lows or you're gonna be trading these pattern setups. So there's a back pattern completion down here. 11440. Other than that, you could trade off of these highs or trade off of the lows. You could buy at the low, sell at the high using three bar reversals, dojis, tweezer tops, tweezer bottoms, double tops, double bottoms. Um, but we're in the middle, of, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere at the moment. So pattern setups, ratio patterns. Um, something that you might be looking for. And then if you go down to the 60, I think there's an even smaller one. But the thing with the smaller one is it's probably not going to be worth the profit. You know, if you're looking at this real small setup here, if you're a pattern trader, 
X, A, B, C, D, uh, which would be a Gartley. The target on this would probably only be... Well, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Might, might be 20 pips or so, so... Yeah, not, not too bad. But again, we'll have to wait for that to... Um, wait for that to play out. And all that leaves us with, guys, is the New Zealand dollar. And you said, I said at the beginning of this session, New Zealand dollar just hasn't been doing anything for me. It's uh, not been doing anything for me. We're in a bearish trend. Um, because of where we are, you want to be mindful, there's a lot of choppy support looking left, which was resistance as well. So might see a hold here. Um, we started to put in... This kind of channel here, which some of you were looking to trade the breakout of. For me, I was just looking for consolidation setups in here. Of which we had the pain-free uh, X, A, B, C, D. If you caught that, rolled over, hit two targets. Um, or, on to the next one. So wherever there will be another set up like this and I think the only one that we're potentially interested in right now is X A B C D which is a cipher setup This is likely to be the nearest thing to play out, you know, the closest setup to play out. Uh, this would be a cipher setup. You'd be shorting at the decompletion. Your stops would be above X. Now, for many of you, you use a 113 inversion. Some of you use go between C and X. Uh, I use A to X. So I go from A to X and back up. So you can see this is set there perfectly. 67.43, and then for target ones, Best case scenario, initial target ones are going to be at the 382. So you can see what we said earlier, 0.9 to 1, didn't we? 0.9 to 1 is, is what's expected of these. This is a 0.95 to 1. Uh, it's going to be around 0.9 to 1 to 1, okay? From 0.9 to 1 to 1 to 1 at best. This is bang in the middle, 0.95 to 1. But because of the strike rate of these setups, um, we trade these regardless of the reward to risk profile. Greg e says dollar yen cipher setting up on the four hour. Um, give us some coordinates or price points. Perhaps you're looking at this. So there's two patterns completing in a similar zone there. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is having a rule that allows you to trade a different approach when you've got this situation. So for me, if the X legs the same and I've got two similar patterns completing at a similar price level, a uh, similar area, I take I have to take the bigger pattern if the X points the same. If the X points different, I take the first pattern to complete. So basically, I can I can take both, uh, you know, potentially. So if the X points are the same, I take the bigger pattern. If the X points different, I take the first pattern to complete, which means I could potentially enter both. So I could hit targets on the first one or get stopped out um, and then enter on the second one as well. So you want to have a rule for that, so you're not thinking, oh, what should I do? What, what one should I take at the time? Morning, Jason. What are your thoughts on smart money concepts? Um, in terms of what?
What do you wanna what do you wanna know? How to trade off of smart money concepts? Um, I wanted to ask that question earlier. Close all trades in profit now, short WTI. Because you did turn off um, I've lost the chat. Oh, here it is. Do you think the method works? Uh, what, the Wyckoff, Wyckoff, Wyckoff method? Yeah, I think all trading systems work. If you make them work. It's a bit like, you know, Elliott Waves. If you ask someone who's an Elliott Waves trader about how they trade Elliott Waves, they'll have a different opinion on how to manage it or what the setup is to another Elliott Waves trader. Doesn't mean that one's right and one's wrong or one works and one doesn't work. Um, I think it's garbage, but whatever works for you, I guess. Well, I mean, look, I, I have, there's many ways of trading, right? Like, there's people I know who trade Ichimoku Cloud very successfully. I wouldn't touch Ichimoku Cloud because I just don't... It's not something that really resonates with me. It's not a system that I want to learn. If you read Market Wizards, there's a trader in the book that trades off of the moon. You know, it, it really... I think people forget that the, the key to trading is consistency. That's it. The, the key to trading is consistency. So it's not about, <clears throat> it's not about um, the actual style. It's about just being consistent. And if you look at any trader who's able to, uh, to make money, you'll see that it's consistency that's making their, uh, them earn money. Damien says, did you see the comment on the video uh, on the 8th of February? The comment was, I've seen a few vids and the Trader Vault, which was very good. Can you do a video about costs? I see no one on YouTube or even anywhere as brokers just don't want traders to know, i.e. brokers, B-book with software slipping prices, limited data feeds, etc. profitable traders, toxic traders. Why brokers say straight through processing when it's not and how they offer zero spreads uh, and why this is profitable for them. This will explain why traders have been trading for a while, calculate the end of year of no high cost. Yeah. Yeah, there's like the secret tax, right? The secret tax, which is the spreads. Absolutely. Um, I've got plans to do a fantastic video on this in the next two weeks. Damien. Um, full moon and new moon reversals. Yeah. Look, that there, there is. There's, there's no, there's no wrong or right way to trade. Um. The only wrong or right thing that you can do in trading, something that's wrong, is, is losing consistency. Yeah? 
And, and look, when I say consistency is the most important thing, if you, like, try trading consistently without backtesting. Try trading consistently without journaling. Try trading consistently without knowing what your expectations are, what the, what the projections are of your system. Try trading consistently um, by using lots and lots of different setups. Um, you know, or trading new markets. You won't. The goal to getting consistent is to have a system that you trust. How do you trust it? By knowing it. How do you know it? Test it. Right? Um, and that's it. Also, there's so many rows and arguments and I'm right, you're wrong over trading. If everyone just tested their system, there'd be no arguments. It's such a loud marketplace, isn't it? Everyone's got the opinion. Oh, that don't work. That doesn't work. Professional traders don't think that there isn't stuff that doesn't work. They just focus on creating a system that does work. And all of the work is on you to make it work. So I don't know why there's so many opinions. I don't know why there's so many opinions. Anyway. How is, what, what was the question there? Um, Ukraine, opinion of Ukraine, Russia thing. Yeah, look, as, a tech, as, an, as an investor, the, the thing with the invest, uh, right, what we saw over the last year, 18 months to two years from an investment standpoint is a lot of the safe markets were becoming uh, less valuable. They were becoming overinflated. So the tech, the tech sector makes up about 23% of the entire S&P 500 index fund, okay? So it's the majority it's the majority of the fund. So everyone puts their money into safe investments when all the crap like COVID and everything's going on um, to the point where it becomes, there's no value left in it, right? So it becomes over overinflated. So when, whenever there's a, like, whenever there's a war or a threat or anything against any economy, the tech sector does take a dip because, you know, tech... Because it's the majority, it's going to show the most volatility. But when it's massively overinflated, uh, you're going to see even more volatility because people start shedding, people start panicking, and you start to see that play out. Now, as a technical trader, you're using the charts, which you've, you've got a system, you've tested it, you've developed it, you know in, you've got a good sample size over you know at least two or three recessions, um, and, and different kind of market conditions. And you know how it performs over a long period of time. That's really all you're focused on. And the chart will tell you exactly what's happening. So you're not really concerned with fundamentals. The only way that I'd be concerned with fundamentals is if I was in a trade and it played out, if I was short on a technical level and we started to see the market crash, I would stop myself from... Um, taking conventional targets, and that's a situation where I'd, ma I'd trail stops and manage a longer position. But I only use those fundamentals to kind of enhance my technical trading. I don't, from an investment standpoint, yeah, you can use those levels to really um, be wary and be fearful. When you're putting regular deposits into the market and you see it's overinflated, you can start to preempt a crash, particularly with news like this, um, and then you might start deploying more cash into the market as you start plummeting, which most people don't do, by the way. 
Most people put less in when we're crashing. You actually want to put more in when we're crashing. Um, so you can do that. But as a technical trader, I don't really concern myself with any of it. One, it's usually priced into the market anyway. Two, it's um, I'm trading off technicals. I don't really care what's going on in the world. First day, learned a lot, hoping to be more consistent. Great. All right, well, look, that brings us to the end of this live stream. Hopefully you've got value today. We've been going on for about two hours now. So um, if you're not already subscribed to my other channels, make sure you go and do that. And let us know what you thought about the stream, wherever you watched it from. And we will see you next time. And tier one guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.